happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. In your eyes, do you look at the Indian people as different slabs like rich, hyper rich, middle class, upper, lower, and then like below the poverty line? Do you look at it like that? Well, it context uh, depends on the context. If what you're looking at is income distribution, that's a useful way to think about it. It may not be a useful to think uh, about it in this way for some other thing. Like? For example, if I am trying to uh, work out public transport systems, right? Sure, the, I want to have a really good public transport system where everybody, rich, poor, everybody uses it. Like in London, rich, poor, everybody uses it. Yeah, the sign of a rich country is where the rich people use public transport. Absolutely. So you, you have to be careful, you know, having these class distinctions is useful for a certain context. It may not be useful uh, for another context. So unfortunately, what happens is that people have these unidimensional views of things and they think that their particular approach is the only meaningful way. But in fact, the lens you use is related to the context you're, that you're trying, trying to solve for. And that is important. And I think I made this point last time as well when you said education is the most important thing that you need to look at. And I uh, corrected you and said, no, education is one thing that you need to look at. Health is another thing. Infrastructure is another thing. Defense is another thing. After all, uh, India built one of the greatest universities in the world in Nalanda, right? But if you don't invest in defense, what happens? You discovered it gets sacked and all mm. the library got burnt. Love that you said that. Because we like to live in this bit of victim mentality, play that, oh, look at our great library, it got burnt. But you need to understand what went wrong as well. Absolutely. we have. So you cannot have these human dimensional views. And that's why I said go governance in general and economics in particular is about dividing your limited resources so that you maximize the output in different dimensions. That's why it's difficult because uh, you're maximizing in multiple dimensions. And uh, obviously you have limited information and in sometimes uh, uh, you are making uh, arbitrary choices. But because it's this moving, messy beast, <laughs> uh, that's why it's a hard subject. The reason I brought up income brackets was because we spoke about uh, becoming the third largest economy, etc. I would assume that when you're talking about a country becoming a larger economy, it basically means when you boil it down to a very simple sentence, you're making people richer. That's what I am assuming. Yes, average. So now let me explain uh, two things. One is you wanted a, a sense of the economy as it is today. And then I will explain what uh, about what we will do with this uh, growth. Okay, uh, sure. Would you prefer it that way? Uh, I mean, I think we'll move into the 2023. I would like to move into it a little later. Okay, fine. I, I'd just like to solve this. And I'll tell you why. Audiences watch these podcasts based on, okay, what is in this for me? Okay, fine. So, I shall. so let's let's talk about like, you know, uh, the income brackets okay. angle. So let's say we become, um, in dollar terms, sure. in the year 28, we become the third largest economy in the world. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> let me point out one thing right in the beginning that in purchasing power terms, we are already the world's third largest economy. Because remember, prices are different in different countries. So since prices of most things are cheaper here, if you, if you adjust for it, we are already the world's third largest economy. But in pure hard dollar terms, we will be the world's third largest economy about in the year 2027, 28. Yeah. Now what happens is that means that the pool of income or that is generated by the whole economy is now much larger. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody gets the same amount of income. There are richer people who get more and there are poorer people who get less. But still, if you uh, have a larger pot and you, pay, uh, you allow for this growth to happen, first of all, by nature of the flow of things, more people have more money, right? The number of poor ha have got diminished because there's more money sloshing around. Now, that doesn't mean that the poor there will still be some people and a big country that will definitely be true who still need some support, right? Now, what do you do about it? Now, there are different ways to deal with this. One way, which is a common way, particularly in the West, is to think about this in terms of relative income and inequality. That is typically the way uh, they think about it. And so they'll say, well, there are too many billionaires, there are so many hundred thousand poor, you know, we should redirect this money to that. 
Now, first of all, that causes two problems. No matter how much money this these few billionaires have, if you divide it among hundreds of millions of people, it will vanish. It, mm. Secondly, you'll mess up the incentive structure of the economy. And why would anybody uh, uh, try to generate high growth if this if you do this beyond a point? So you can do it only up to a point. You can have higher taxes on the rich up to a point and redistribute. So there's one one way of doing it. However, in addition to this, you can think of it in another way, which is the way we in this government have thought about it, which is called antodaya, which means you think about the poorest guy in the system without worrying about uh, inequality as such. This is not about making the rich guy poorer. This is about helping the poorest guy. So this is an absolute poverty way of thinking about things. Okay, so if you look at the way we have dealt with it in here, we have gone and targeted the very poorest people in directly. So provide them with gas, provide them with some health insurance, make sure they can build a, uh, uh, build, uh, sort of build a pakka house. There's the prime minister's Avas Yojana, or you have um, the toilet scheme, right? Swachh Bharat. So what, what are we trying to do? We are basically saying that, look, everybody needs to be brought to some basic level. So we target absolute poverty and then bring them to a place where they themselves can take risks and participate in this growing economy. Mm. Right? So they don't have to be spoon fed. Mm. But at the very bottom, you have to help out. Mm. So this is a somewhat different way of thinking of poverty. It's, it's about targeting not inequality, but absolute poverty. Before we moved on to that 2023 question, I was actually going to ask you how one makes poor people hmm. slightly richer. I know I'm boiling down that very complex question in a very simple way. Uh, but I think you answered it right now that there's multiple ways and one of the ways uh, is, is growth. Just grow the pool. You see, otherwise what you're doing is you're redistributing poverty. Okay. Yeah. We are a country that is, as things stand, um, about a $4 trillion economy. Now, we are 1.4 billion people. You do your maths, you will not come out to a very large number. So, you'll come to $2,400, uh, $500 uh, uh, per capita income. Now, you know, uh, it's not going to solve anything. It will still be a very, very poor country. So, we just need to take this up to some level like five, six thousand dollars where you know, the generalized absolute poverty will begin to disappear. Right. Now, there'll still be some few million people who, who really need direct support, but the number will shrink. Got it. But meanwhile, the economy is larger. There are more jobs around. Uh, there, are more, there are more taxes around because this larger economy is presumably paying more taxes. So the government has more resources. Uh, the private sector has more resources. Um, and so uh, the amount of uh, sort of... Uh, the, the 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 systemic uh, the sort of um, ability to raise people out of uh, poverty is consequently much greater. Okay. I think this question came out from the place of uh, having watched Swades as a kid. Everyone wants to be a Shah Rukh Khan from Swades in some way. You know, especially when it comes to India, you want to go and help uh, the underprivileged. Every person watching this uh, podcast as well. And I'm 100% sure that's effectively how you look at yourself in some ways also. Well, one has to be very careful not to be patronizing. Uh, I certainly want to ma uh, make uh, want to make a contribution to uh, uh, helping the country's economy grow bigger and generate jobs and so on. But uh, you know this uh, somewhat patronizing okay. uh, sort of uh, view of Swadesh. You know, I went there <laughs> and helped the poor. I am always suspicious of this somewhat. Uh, NGO-ish okay. uh, approach to uh, economic development. Okay. In the end, uh, what you want is an economy that is generating real jobs and not charity. And so I would say uh, whether it's the big, you know, whether it's a, a, a small startup that is trying to innovate something and employing a whole bunch of young people to do something new or a large company, whether it's, uh, you know, the Tatas or, uh, or Reliance or uh, uh, Infosys, uh, you know, creating jobs for hundreds of uh, hundreds of thousands of people, or even uh, you know parts of the government where uh, jobs are being created uh, for all kinds of things, from the army 
to railways, to other areas. So what I'm trying to say is that generating economic growth is the real service. Hmm. Okay, fair. Yeah, so managing a and managing to grow our economy to something of a different scale is far more important than this Swadesh approach to <laughs> uh, helping a few people mix the person who's doing it feel better maybe personally, okay. but it's not solving any problem. You know, every time you disagree with me, it's always kind of the same disagreement that don't look at it with a myopic point of view. It's yeah. much wider than that. Yes. Okay. Which is also probably why I enjoy speaking to you so much. Uh, one, disagreements lead to better conversations. And two, you have a very wide spectrum of things that you do. So if you enjoy this video, subscribe to TRS Clips for more.